mean how to use analytics about your digital marketing efforts to optimize the best digital marketing strategy you can put forward, right? Uh, so let's start. Let's just ask, like, what is optimization to begin with, right? So I define optimization very simply. It's choosing the best method to achieve a goal, right? And in the marketing context, we usually mean this by uh, choosing the particular copy or text that you're going to use to achieve something like a click-through. And so there's really three components to that. Choose, right? How will you identify the best method? Like, what is the way you're going to choose, right? Method, what will you identify? What do we mean by method or means, right, in this context? And then goal, how will you measure success? And we're going to go through each of those in turn. And we're going to start with choosing, because choosing is probably one of the most difficult concepts of the group to understand. And digital marketing and a lot of marketing has really been revolutionized by the idea that we can now test everything, right? Rather than doing a bunch of research ahead of time, which you know is still valuable, but rather than doing that, one solution is that if we don't know which item someone's gonna prefer, we can just present a group of people with both options and let them choose, and then use that to make a decision about the future um, efforts that we're gonna leave, right? So testing is really about, uh, you know, so choosing in the, in the optimization framework is really about identifying a test that is gonna give you the ability to compare multiple methods, and by that we mean multiple means of communicating your message to your consumers and determining which is the best. So some standard methods of testing include split or A-B testing, and that's what we're gonna talk about a lot today, right? Um, and um, that basically says comparing two options and just choosing which one is the best. Uh, multivariate testing allows you to compare more than two options simultaneously. And then multi, and then content experiments um, is a particular way of doing split and A-B testing in Google Analytics, right? So this allows you to do things like automating your testing, uh, reporting statistical st significance, trying to figure out what the test length is. And I, I'm just pointing you to that mainly as a way for you to quickly jump in and get your hands on some of these tools, if you're, especially if you're already using Google Analytics in your digital marketing strategy, right? Um, that all being said, we're going to talk a lot about uh, split testing today. So split or A-B testing, and here's an example that's from Google Analytics in their content uh, analytics space, is when you basically come up with two different versions of a website, um, or it could be an email, or it could be social media, or whatever, and you try and distribute them separately, and so that, such that two different independent groups of people see them, and then basically you judge based upon their click-through rates which one you like better. So in this case, for instance, on uh, the Google example, one example is they have this access to over 325,000 professionally designed icons for a group, right? And the other example, they have try icons that are pro risk-free, right? And so the choice, the, what they're trying to do is they're trying to figure out which of these two pages is more likely to drive traffic to the site. And we'll show some more other examples on this. I want to get some definitions down before we go too much in the examples. Multivariate testing is like A-B testing gone wild, right? So rather than just having one particular control and one particular policy, you can have one control and you know six or seven policies. And by the way, we use the word control to define the baseline case that we're trying to compare against. So we have a control example that is the way we've been doing things, and then we have an alternate example that we're trying to explore, right? You might think of this as the control in the experiment, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, right? We're trying to explore which of these different um, options is the best way to go, right? And so here they're kind of testing a bunch of different examples, and really the point I wanna make is that if you can understand A-B testing, you can understand all these other examples because essentially one way to think of A-B testing is you're just testing again and again and again each of these different items against another item, right? Okay. So when you run an A-B test, right, you might come up with the question of how long do I need for it to run, right? So I have my two options. I have my risk-free option, for instance, and my baseline option that is uh, above, right? And I set, I, you know, I set them up, I direct some traffic to my AB, to, sorry, to my, my um, alternate test, my risk-free test, and I direct some traffic to my baseline test, right? Um, and you know, one thing I can do is I can just look at click-through rates, like how often do people continue to click on the website, right? Or I might look at, given that I direct them to one direction or the other, how long do they spend on the website, right? So I start to accumulate those numbers, and I have these numbers that say the average length of 
time on site for A is this, the average length of time on site for B is X, right? It's different, sorry. At what point do I know that those are different enough that I should make a judgment as to whether I should keep the baseline case or, or move to the alternate case, right? Should I stick with A or stick with B, right? Or go with B. Um, so the way you do this basically is that there's a lot of good statistics that say that you've now observed enough samples that you can make a statistically significant determination that the means of these two conversion rates are different from each other, right? In other words, let's say the conversion, like the click-through rate on A is, point, um, is 0.3 and the click-through rate on B is 0.36, right? At what point can I make the decision that 0.36 is different than well, um, there, are, there are methods to determine this, and that's what we're about to talk about. And there are three factors that are important in making that determination. One is the number of participants. In other words, the sample size, right, that you, that you are going to look at. Second is that how much of a change in the conversion rate do you consider to be minimally successful, right? So for instance, is 1% enough? Is 2% enough? Is 6% enough? Uh, and then finally, you also need to think about how many different variations. Am I just doing A and B, or am I doing A, B, and C, for instance? Once you've made those decisions, the maths work out really well, everything else just falls out, and I can tell you exactly how long to run your test for, essentially. So in the next lecture, we're going to talk about